Hi, it's Paul Schering. I'm here with uh, Sarah Wayne Callies, Amaudi Nolasco, Robert Nepper, Wade Williams, and Dominic Purcell. Uh, we're watching episode 115 called Brothers Keeper, written by Zach Estrin. It's our flashback episode, and it's going to be kind of fun to record this one because none of the actors in the room have actually seen this thing cut together. And it's already one of our favorites as a, uh, as a staff. Look at Wenton, his nice coat. Cold? <laughs> what was it this time? You really want to know? And the arc we wanted in this uh, episode was that Wentworth, the Michael character, very much self-confident, looks down on his brother, thinks his brother's a ne'er-do-well. And so he's kind of an ass at the beginning of the episode. And we want to have this arc that he realized how much he loves this guy right here. It's directed by Greg Yatanis, and this just is awesome. Who is a god? That was a cold day that day, I remember that. What you doing here, Crab? Long time no see, Mr. Link. Where you been? Here and there. Mm -hmm. Crab Simmons, there's a name for you. <laughs> so let's talk about what you can do. One of the interesting conceits about this show is that the Lincoln character is innocent, and yet he was willing that night to pull the trigger. So he had the potential to kill, and yet we have sympathy for him. And that's kind of one of the things about the show is the gray area that all of our characters have, which is they do a lot of anti-heroic things. Michael certainly is breaking the law to uh, save his brother's life, to do the right thing. And we like that because it gives a lot of dimension to the characters. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. I mean, I'm over Glazer and Ross. Lawyer number 97. Benefits are good. There's not going to be a lot of commentary because uh, the actors are so enthralled. Because they're watching. We haven't so seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's very quiet <laughs> now. <laughs> How is he? He's, um... Well, it's interesting. You guys are saying that sometimes it's very difficult to watch your, your finished work because you overthink things and you, you worry that it might affect your future performance. Is that right? Well, I, I don't like to... It's funny because I watch the show as a fan. Hmm. I don't work with all of you guys. I don't know what's going on outside. I read it when I get the script, so I I watch it as a fan. But I try to fast forward my my scenes. Mm. <laughs> you TiVo them and fast forward. Yeah, yeah. Because that's I... really interesting. Well, there's so much work we don't get to see. Yeah, you, a lot of you guys work in kind of you know mutually exclusive uh, boxes. You know, mm -hmm. like Sarah certainly doesn't cross with someone like Paul Adelstein, who plays Kellerman very much, for instance. Or Amadi or Rob. Or me. We we never. Me I never Sarah, worked with these guys. Yeah. But that's fun, and we like to see the new dynamics between people we haven't seen talk before. Like this one right here, we wanted to kind of build out this story a little bit and add a little intrigue to it. You know how you can tell God is a man? Shoes. Ooh. Easy. Hmm. Hmm. And again, uh, in the pilot, I talked about this location of Michael's apartment being the practical location that we actually shot in. Once we went to air, his apartment became a set, and everything in the background there is a, uh, a lit backdrop. Sorry. What? Just my brother. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the love of your life. <laughs> right. Can I answer it? Ah, oh, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the common guy's reaction, but Michael's a little more noble. Let's go back to what we were doing. And look at that. Look at the production value of that. Again, this is just Chicago just giving us a lot of visual opportunities here. It was so cold that week. God, welcome uh, to Chicago, man. Oof. When are we shooting this in, uh, in December? December. Last week it was the last right episode. Christmas. Yeah. Christmas. It was like one degree. It was ridiculous. It broke records that December. Coldest yeah. December on record. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I think it's actually true. Yeah, this is this actually speaks to that continuity problem that I spoke about earlier where, you know, it was the hottest April on record, you know, in episode one oh five and now here we are <laughs> on one fifteen and it's an ice box. But the good thing about this is a flashback episode, so yeah. Michael Schofield, get your hands off of that other woman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you had a jealous one here. Yeah, I love that lonely shot there. Poor Look at cold that break. breath. It's like, I'm so cold, man. I hope we get this take right so I can go home. <laughs> <laughs> Your ears are red. And the gun. Oh, beauty. Nice reveal. <laughs> I guess we'll have to change the uh, credit sequence yeah. next year, huh? Yeah. It's this credit sequence really growing on me, though. We gotta get more origami into this show. Yeah.
The Japanese are just clamoring for the origami. I saw the first international poster for Prison Break Japan, and uh, there's no Wentworth, no Dominic, nobody, just the origami swan. <laughs> wow. And the idea of this episode was to really kind of peel back the layers and show some elements of these people's lives that we didn't know before. And I think we do that in a really, really nice, nice way here. It actually also helps my um, storyline because a lot of people tell me, well, well, you're the one that doesn't need to escape. You'll be out in 18 months, you know? Right. And it really shows, and we'll see later, hopefully, um, the relationship with Mari Cruz and, and the reason people go, are going to see and say, oh, that's why, you know what? There's, there's so much. Yeah, oh, that's a very sweet story in this episode is uh, Sucre and Mari Cruz falling in love. Wow. Oh, this is great. This is when he bumps. Yeah. It's great because... Are you kidding me? <laughs> 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 Look at him. He's looking all sharp. Wow, collared shirt. Yeah. Yeah, and he was like 102 and blind. <laughs> With a plastic hit. <laughs> oh, my God. What? <laughs> <laughs> You're all sex, Mar. <laughs> Look at that shot, though. Look at this. is so great. It's so dreamy, this, this episode. The music. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Hector. <sighs> Camille. Great. Just a great girl to work with. She's so beautiful. She's awesome and just very comfortable. She's great. Hey, they're waiting for you in 4B. Uh, pull this film. I'll be there in a minute. score is so great in this episode. Morphine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I watched more movies about drugs. <laughs> well, that's something we didn't know about Sarah. Look at that <laughs> shot. Oh, the needle shot. That'll always get you. Not the Out of focus. That's just so nice. Filmmaking is so nice. Yeah. I love this right here. Watch this. That little badge. Ooh. See, that's the camera guys, man. Did you see how they did it with all the great focus pulls and fantastic stuff? No, not, nothing to do with Sarah's performance. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's great. It's all great together, you know? I mean, if you don't have those guys doing it, you can't see what we're doing. So and here's something great. people might not know. Four of our crew are related, right? We've got the two Carlson brothers that are yeah. focus pullers. Mary. And Mary. And Mary. Then Mary and her sister Drew was on it for a while. Is there anything this is a little a little trivia for you. That guy right there, uh, who's talking to C Note right now, was the guy that shot Bishop McMorrow in the pilot. Oh, uh, really? But his face was never on screen, so we just reused him for this because he's a really good actor, and we completely underutilized him in that. We just saw his finger. Uh, but this is a real nice storyline with C Note, where we realize he was actually a very noble guy that got railroaded. This is the big reveal, isn't it? Yeah. As to, yeah, it is. The Lincoln setup, or no, the 90 grand. Yeah, well, that comes a little bit later. Look at this, it's 2001. It's a great coat she's wearing. <laughs> Look at him. It is. Look at him. It's like, the year is 2525. <laughs> it's supposed to be a flashback, man. What the hell? It's great. He's still on his high horse. And it's great because uh, Lincoln doesn't tell him. Lincoln's humble. He doesn't. He won't tell him the debt that Michael really owes him. I didn't do it. You knew him. Who? Stedman. No. You worked for his company. So what? From which you That's a soundstage? Um, I don't know. I know. No, this is Joliet. Joliet? You sound like one of the damn detectives. I'm just saying. You think I did? Dominic's hair was still pretty short here because we had shaved his head in the week before to uh, execute him. But this is supposed to be three years before that. So it's just one of those things when you're in the forward march of TV production. Yeah, you knew, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you I just... wanted to put a fucking wig on him. I was like, yeah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they did no. that. They did that in the pilot where they wanted to put a wig on Wentworth for the uh, for the flashback scene, and the, he actually walked out with this <laughs> <laughs> Jason Priestley mop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this flat top wig, and he just looked at me and started laughing. I go, that's not gonna be on film. <laughs> <laughs> and Robin wanted to wear a wig in this, and they wouldn't let her. No, no, she looks she looks good as she is. Leaving because I was there too difference is I got out and this just this episode just enlightens us so much as to their backstory about how they grew up differently what'd you do with your half link 
Hmm. He bites his tongue. You guys are so good together. Mm -hmm. They're really brothers. I hope for your sake that's true. Here, here is where we want the turn to anger. Trust me, that won't be a problem. And Patricia Wedig playing the vice president, I just, she just has that Hillary Clinton look, you know? She just assumes that persona so well. Are we with Governor Tancredi? He has aspirations, he won't. He is a perfect example of somebody I haven't worked with or haven't even seen. I think we crossed maybe twice. Patty? Yeah. But I, I don't, think, so. I don't yeah. think Sucre and the VP are ever no. actually <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to ever happen. <laughs> That'll be the flash forward episode. Drugs, bribes. Forget about what you want to be true. But Wentworth plays it just differently. His, his performance here is great because it's just a different character. Do you know what I mean? Before he gets humbled with the new knowledge that he's going to get mm. here. And this is all a wonder. Watch this shot. It's all a steady cam shot, a guy yeah, being pulled is. backwards. And uh, it's very difficult because the camera's got to get it right, the lighting's got to be right, and the actors especially. You can't edit out of it. You want to know what the 90 grand was for? I think I do. You. What do you mean? The money you got when you were 18 years old from your mother's life insurance. The money that paid for your degree, that got you this job, that bought you your loft. Your mother never had life insurance. That money came from Lincoln. Hmm. Big reveal. How? He borrowed it. The debt. Ooh. And that yeah, was huge, man. Yeah. That was always mm. the question we wanted to answer, you know, creatively, was beyond just being brothers, which, you know, in my opinion, is sometimes enough to want to break your brother out of jail. But uh, he had to have a greater debt to Lincoln, and, and it was that Lincoln had basically made him who he was through his kind of illicit means. Puts an interesting responsibility on Veronica's shoulders, too. Yeah. She makes all this. But me. And now look at, look at Wentworth's uh, modulated performance here. It changes. He's, he's, he's humbled now. They're literally at different heights than they were in the last scene. Yeah, you're right. And that, that's really nice performance and camera-wise because if you rewind to that other scene, we shoot up at Wentworth and he's high and mighty up on his horse and Dominic we're shooting down at. Now look at it. No, it's a, it's right we're on. looking up at Dominic and Wentworth's a little bit below our eye line. The night you call. Work hard, do what you do. They look like brothers, don't they? I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. And you will. Good actors right there. Mm -hmm. I love this little sequence right here. Here's the part I don't understand. All the evidence is lining up in a path that leads directly to you. They say they have you on tape. Pulling the trigger. Hmm. If you didn't kill Terrence Stedman, how the hell did someone make it look like you did? Perfect. Perfect's a strong word, cuz. Wow. There you go. Hmm. Look at it again, Chicago production value. Is that Joe there? Yeah. You know what's funny is uh, the guy that we have playing Monche on the left, he's actually not that heavy. Um, no. We had this whole storyline. He's wearing a fat suit right there. And the whole storyline was going to develop over the season that he finds out about the escape and he's going to go on the escape, but he's too thick to get through the tube. So he's going to have to exercise and go on a crash diet to be able to get through the tube. But we didn't end up being able to do that. So the poor guy's stuck with a fat suit for the entire season. <laughs> oh, man. Open the drawer. Hey, hey, okay. Open the drawer. Okay, okay. Quick, quick, quick. All right, okay. And here's Yours truly. a Maori getting himself a. I want to see the whole of it. A hundred bucks for a dinner, or a hundred pesos, or whatever that was. <laughs> but again, this goes back to that anti-heroic quality of the show, is at the end of the day, he did hold up a liquor store. Where'd you do that show? Is that stock? Stock. But this is a stage. Yeah, this is a stage. This is not a stage. This is at Joliet. And here's C-Note. He looks so different without his beard. Yeah, yeah, he does. And this is our contemporary reference, obviously. When historians look back, they'll know that we were uh, influenced by Abu Ghraib here. And he makes the decision that this is not right. Great lighting. Yeah. He really modulates Greg, the director, really made some choices to, you know, 
change the color tones of scenes. Like when we go to Michael's scene in this world, it's very cold, it's very blue. And when you go out to Iraq, it's very orange and alive and red. And then when we see Sarah, it's kind of sterile and white. And so there are a lot of different color looks in this episode, and I think it's just done masterfully. Ah, a little information about our old friend, the crane. Was that uh, an actual um, building, right? I mean, that was not stage or nothing. No, like that's that. not a stage. That's, that's like on the 30th floor or some building in downtown Chicago. We shoot so much of this uh, on location, which I think really helps us. Uh, here we go. I love this performance. I brought you a gift from the hospital. That guy was so nice. Yeah, Joey, he's great. And he's supposed to be the drug addict boyfriend. But again, we didn't want to get the guy that was so obviously the strung out mm -hmm. druggy guy. Mm -hmm. And you work at the North Pole. The North Pole had gunshot wounds and anticipation. Seriously, I don't know how you work there. Look how strung out she is. That's just me without makeup, dude. <laughs> <laughs> nice with the bike. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's set up. Yeah. And you like helping your friends. Uh-oh. Look, look at the lack of focus in your eyes. That's great, wow. man. That's so great. How do you do that? Oh, my God. Oh, can you hear it? This is called uh, doing it the uh, eight-day production-wise. It's like kid gets hit by a car off screen, <laughs> add a little uh, sound effect there, and it's like, oh, look, kid hit by car. <laughs> and just these choices that go into um, slow motion on Sarah, I think are really nice. It's kind of operatic, you know, a lot of this episode. Are you a doctor? <laughs> This just goes to show how much of a story you can tell without dialogue. You know, mm -hmm. this is all acting, all visual, and all music. And it conveys just so much more than a bunch of dialogue ever would. And that's, that's true cinema, when you can do it without the dialogue. It's good directing. Nice. Mm, so good, huh? Very good, babe. Aren't you the guy that shot the bishop? No. Hmm. That's fine. I actually brought you here to talk to you about something else. Prisoner abuse report you filed? Yes, sir. I need to know how far you're willing to go with it. Again, an illusion you can make here of Iraq is uh, certainly costumery, but uh, those establishing shots that we get, they're stock shots of the desert, and this is just inside of a tent somewhere. Mm. It's lit with very warm lighting and filters, and we dress these guys up as military guys, and you have this real believable illusion that we are in Iraq right now. Oh, yeah. And, uh, again, that's movie magic, but at the same time, you know, it's just a testament to our line producer, our directors, our crew, in terms of being able to make a show of this scope, particularly this episode, on a very, very low budget. I loved in the script, you guys would write, exterior, the fucking desert. <laughs> <laughs> that's Zach Estrin, he, yeah, he has a special way of writing. Exterior, the fucking desert, day. <laughs> <laughs> I an apostrophe. You cannot do this. Ooh. Look at that. Look Ooh, at that. Beautiful. That's the court, yeah. Yeah. Shy town. But that's actually in uh, City Hall, right? Or something? And it's nice to see Cultural Lincoln Center. in a different look there, you know? The season two look. Guilty. Defendant will remain in custody until. Season, season two? I don't know about the suit, brother. Yeah, Dominic can't wait for season two when he's not uh, wearing the, the state outfit the whole time. And he actually gets to do something besides be locked in a box. Yep. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll see lots of it. This is a nice little touch right here. And we had actually shot a sequence that started this whole thing was Veronica and Lincoln as young children That's with Michael right. there. Is it weird that young Veronica has brown eyes? Um, shh. Sorry. You know, people's eye colors change. <laughs> I'm sorry. I only noticed it because Robin has breathtakingly beautiful yeah. eyes. Yeah, um, but what we did is we shot that original shot. Here's a, here's a line. Here's a line for you. How after we make love, you get this little puddle of water in your belly button. <laughs> <laughs> Sucre is a romantic. It's disgusting. Well, I, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're beautiful. She was, she's great to work with. Very comfortable, you know. It's... And you guys knew each other before this, right? Briefly, we met one day at a party, and we never saw each other again until this. Mm -hmm. 
It's a very sweet story, this story. You know, you guys really make it believable. It's nice to have an, a love story that actually is happy for a minute. Yeah. yeah. Would you chase me if I did? When does Lincoln get some action, brother? <laughs> <laughs> Again, look at the production value here. I mean, it, you just cannot say enough about this. You check over at the price more? Ain't hiring. And there's uh, our friend, the rapper Mike Jones, who does a really nice job. How long do you think you can keep this up? Man, until somebody gives me a job. No, I'm talking about lying to Casey. The unit's been on leave for a long damn time. This guy's great. Yeah, he does a good job. He never acted before, before he came in. Uh, this is his first gig yeah, ever. 112, he acted and uh, he did that, and then one, this one, 115. That's really impressive. Yeah. And he's got this prosthetic set of, like, uh, diamond teeth or something, some bling-bling that yeah. he usually wears when he raps. And we thought maybe he shouldn't have them for this. He's got, like, ten carats of diamonds on his ears yeah. there right now. Holy cow. But he's supposed to be a guy that uh, is connected in that way, so... Does he pop up season two? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He didn't even let her testify. Who? Letitia Barris. Again, now we're back to that... And that cop? Changed his story a dozen part times. part of move on, don't you get? After mom died, when it was just you and me, I remember having trouble sleeping. Here's another expositional scene that Michael just does so wonderfully. Yeah. Mm. He has an amazing way of being completely shut down and completely available at the same time. It's phenomenal. It stands for familial obligation. Watching out for your own. Maybe it's my turn to watch out for you. Ooh. Look at that camera work. Hey, Paul, did you know that about the crane when you started writing this thing? So yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, they're uh, transferring me to a prison where I wait until they execute me. Can I still visit? Yeah, in that far a place called Fox River. Uh oh. The seeds of an idea. Hmm. Why? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> How come there's four? This scene, though. Oh, this is your scene. This is so oh, out of left is... field. <laughs> this is great. You're like, where are we? Where are we? Just watch this. He just came over last night. I like him. Well, I do too. And, I want you both and she's great because she's a local Chicago actress, and uh, you never know what you're going to get when you're when you're hiring local sometimes. And she just kind of shows up, and just her performance in this is just really, really great. We've been lucky with the local actors on this show. This That's is great. Wonderful. Chicago's got great actors. Yeah. Watch this. Watch Lots this. Of theater. Watch this. Actors. Evening, Mrs. Holland. Hey. Don't you look lovely this evening? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's so good. Tell me, Clarice. <laughs> <laughs> look at that shot right there. Look at that shot. Paul, I love how excited you can be about something you've seen I 20 know. times. <laughs> no, Outstanding. I'm, I'm very proud of the work that's gone into this show. I think it's just a real testament to what can be done with a lot of talent and a lot of uh, energy. Because, uh, you know, you make these shows for two and a half million dollars an episode. And there are a lot of other shows on... on That's just Dominic's salary. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but there are a lot of other shows on TV with a similar budget, and they don't look like this. Here we go. What's your problem, man? <laughs> I'm just trying to protect you. Well, you think you can give Why is that, Paul? Why, why does this show look really good? I mean, touching back on that point, what do you think it is? Well, I think the cinematographers are very, very good. Chicago certainly helps the location. And we have a, a line producer in Gary Brown who likes to say yes as opposed to no. And line producers generally want to say no because they don't want to spend too much money. They don't want to get in trouble with the network. And uh, mm. Gary Brown has a can-do mentality. It's extraordinarily rare for, <laughs> <laughs> I love this. for a line producer. So he always goes for it, and we always get these great locations. <laughs> That's right. Actually, I'm going to need a little bit more this time. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's so funny. It's kind of one of the sweetest robbing a liquor store scenes you're going to see, you know? Sorry. Okay. 
<laughs> Oops. There's just some lights right there. Lights and sound effects, right? Then we shoot this later, a number of hours later. That could have gone better. You get tipped off, bro? What did you call him and tell him I you were going to be there? by who? Oh, did Hector call? Hector. Oh, I never got that James before. No, Kurt is a cool guy. Yeah, Kurt's Kurt great. God. I can't remember the last time I was this much of a nervous wreck. School board, second term, 1992. What is their backstory? And we're trying to we're trying to humanize all the characters and them, you know. They there's a fidelity that he has to her on on an emotional level. And we want everyone to have human motivations. Even her, her motivation is to protect her brother, you know, so in some ways it's, it's the same motivation as Michael's. Of course, she wants to be president of the United States, too, and all those other things. <sighs> That's right. <laughs> this is great. That actually might be the wrong word. What a shot. That's the real sun. Beautiful. Is it? Yeah. Wow. Probably didn't give any takes, huh? No. Greg was like, get it right. You yeah. get one. <laughs> Look at that. Just little details, though. You know, it speaks a lot, just her hands, you know. And that's also the, the camera opera. I mean, because they're really starting to understand and know their performances, and they can anticipate now more or less what we're going to do. Yeah, because sometimes what you'll have is you'll have, you know, we're usually rolling two or three cameras simultaneously, and you'll have, sometimes you'll have one guy covering this shot right here, mm -hmm. and the B camera will be, you know, searching, looking for little details like the hands and stuff like that. By the way, the necklace I wear in that shot was actually given to me by a friend of mine who's a bishop in the old Catholic Church. Hey, Sarah. I used to be a doctor, right? This is great. Uh, I still am. Maybe you and I could... Uh, Get it on. Maybe we could uh, talk about it over dinner. I got a gift card to the Red Lobster over off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. But watch this. Thank you. Really. Uh, I... Tonight's kind of my night to work on my resume. Um, oh. Yeah, I'll, of course. <laughs> Sorry, I uh... And you humanized Bellic right there in that little yeah. moment. Hey, look at him, his heart's breaking. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's just minimalism. Again, that minimalism of the acts, just, just a little bit of a, an eye blinking and a mouth pursing and stuff like that. It's just, it's such a testament to the actors in the show, just the minimalism. This I shot, felt really bad. The really. samurai shot. <laughs> what it's look at that. Oh, it's happened to me so many times. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't acting. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that shot. Mm. It's like a canvas. Yeah, really nice. And again, this is a this is a set, so it allows us to get those overhead shots and stuff like that. I hate lighting guys like that with the dashboard light, but you have to do it. Otherwise, you don't know who's driving. Cars are very difficult to light in. See, look. Have you ever seen a car driving down the street with a guy's face lit like that? Uh-oh. You know, math was never my best subject. I <gasps> but, um, and that camera creeps a little bit the whole time, just getting a little uncomfortable. You want to learn some tricks, Crazy? Like what? Like your nine times tables. Right? Nine times one is... Nine... Nine times two is... Eighteen. Nine times three is... Twenty-seven! Oh, <laughs> that <laughs> look. <laughs> wow. But Robert just brings something where, you know, obviously it's a very uncomfortable thing because he's with these children and he's a killer. But at once you're discomfited, but at the same time you can just feel how much he wants to be loved, you know? Look at that. Oh, that kiss. The one where she yeah. kissed me, I thought, uh, totally made sense for the next scene. See, look how, look at that. The tea bag, the guy we know, that we hate, and we love to hate, and hate to love. Welcome back to America's most wanted How tall sequence. did they make you in that shot, babe? Huh? Four foot one. Six foot six. Like, six, 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 eight with a front. <laughs> okay. Awesome. <laughs> they did say six foot eight, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See little details. Big man. Hear. Big man. Six eight. 
Now, uh, it's good to see Michael's this. some mm -hmm. kind of genius. This is right, right? He's got oh. a low latent inhibition. He's a detail-oriented uh, genius. Where he absorbs everything. But he can't seem to memorize in this scene. Fox <laughs> River. But then, fortuitously, someone shows up with... Huh? Hmm. And it's great. We originally put out a casting call in Chicago for a guy, delivery man, who had these tattoos. Uh, but girl. this woman came in, and she just had these really interesting tattoos. And it was just different, kind of more edgy, you know, to have a woman. Mm -hmm. And so, like Sid. Yeah. Plus, there might be a tip involved here. <laughs> Keep... Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. The music's great, man. Nice, nice. Wow. Nice. Such a good episode. God, I like watching you guys work. What do you guys think so far? You like it? I love it. Yeah. Yeah. love it. Love it. That's that's different. And Rockman does a really nice job. He uh he really comes into his own as the season progresses. Look at you take the girl away. Mm -hmm. What? Well, the thing is. I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> a perfectly sweet little scene in Dominic <laughs> ruins it. Yeah, um... You know, if you watch this episode and you just listen to the, the score, you can see how a very minimalist score can really be effective. Sometimes you get too overwrought with these huge cinematic scores, you know, too emotional and too dramatic. And sometimes let the actors and let the moment play and just really just augment it with some very simple music. Crazy. Maybe. So is the way I got kicked out of the army. So is the way. Paul, I what what do you do with the film? Do you wash it? When we shoot these things, they look nice, but then you see it on TV and you go, "Oh my God, look at that!" It gets color corrected, where we will, you know, bring out a little more contrast, maybe make it a little more blue. The blues in this, yeah. Yeah, the blues are just the, the original negative that we get when we see that is uh, very pretty, but it gets a little more pretty. And all shows are doing that now; they're all doing post production. You owe me this, man. Don't you ever let her know where I am. You feel me? Solid. And the great thing about all these different characters' storylines is that it gives us somewhere to go in season two and beyond, which is how do they sustain or, you know, rectify these situations that they've gotten into with an escape looming over them. We, we see uh, uh, Wentworth without the tattoos and in a, in a short sleeve. Right. That was on purpose. And here are some little quick hits that are uh, hints for next year, right? Wow. Usually I do this the other way. <laughs> Why do you want to? I want what I want. El coyote. El coyote, sí. What is that, man? Hmm. The Bolshoi booze, it says. Ripe Chance Woods. So those are hints for the uh, second season? We're going to continue to do what we did in season one, because Michael's plan, his tattoo, doesn't end once they get outside the walls. So there are still a lot of components that are required afterwards, and it'll be fun to, to play the tattoo game in season two, you know? That's great. Obviously it won't be the blueprints to the, you know, U.S. highway system. I think you can just get a map. <laughs> Look at Stacy Keach. I'm out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice being in the Scottish jail, but I'm glad to be out. <laughs> yeah. Is Pugnac real? Yeah. I don't know that you can get it in a uh, pill form, though. I suppose you can get anything in pill form. She just brings a wood here. Teabag, you know, Robert here, I, I love the, the arc of this scene, when an actor can start at one place and end at another place. Loved you, Susan. Robert wanted to shave his beard off for the, the other scenes, 
to kind of differentiate him from the man that he became in prison. And uh, we thought it was a good idea. And so now the, the goatee is coming back. And then, and then to have you do me like that, to just throw me out to the dogs, it's toss me out the back door like that. You're a murderer, Teddy. That's not. Hmm. A better man. Redemption, very big theme in, in this series. That doesn't just erase the man who killed six students in Alabama. He starts to turn. Just waiting for me to walk up them front steps. He's just awesome to watch, bro. Shh. <laughs> I'm awesome. I gotta watch this. Uh-oh. See, look at that. You see that scene? Ooh. That scene, he started very vulnerable and saying, I loved you and, you know, I'm very hurt. And at the end, I like your saliva. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah said to me when we read the script, she said, oh my God, that's going to be a really hard scene because you have to turn on a dime. But you'll, you'll be able to do it, hopefully. <laughs> that's not what I said at all. Talk to you later. <laughs> I said they gave you something that good because they know you can pull it off. All right, here we Pressure. go. Now, this, and you swallowed your Adam's apple. This ties into the original pepper cutting scenes. Will be dead soon, and then... This is operatic right here. This is unbelievable. And just watch, watch Wentworth. Watch everything that happens in those eyes. Again, the drama of just letting an actor act, the camera do its work, and the music do its work. Not a damn word of dialogue. And it's by far and away magic. Doesn't he sound like he's doing the Olympic skating <laughs> thing right now? A double pirouette. This is so beautiful. Let's take both. Oof. What an episode, man.